Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to build this outdoor three-level planter. Uh, my wife wanted this to go along with our garden that we have in the backyard, and this is just something so that she can put some smaller plants or some herbs, things like that, that she's going to use frequently, go out and take little clippings of, and, and my daughter Covey is here now helping us do these projects. This thing is also really easy to build. It's a really popular seller, and it's inexpensive. It takes uh, five 2x4s, six cedar pickets, and a short length of 2x8. Check this out. All right, so I have both uh, Lowe's and Home Depot here in my town, actually several of each. Home Depot happens to be one of the closer ones to me, so let's just uh, look at their prices there. This is where I probably go most often anyway. All right, so what you do, I just use these cedar uh, dog-eared fence pickets. They're $2.98 each. I got six of them. That's $17.88. Uh, then our 2x4s, I'm using a pressure-treated 2x4, so this can either sit in the dirt or sit on the concrete and never have to worry about this rotting. Uh, five of these things. They're $6.38 each. And then I've, I need a piece of 2x8. I only need like three or three and a half feet, I think. This is an eight-footer, so this would be enough to make two planters with. So instead of being, you know, 12 bucks, it'd be more like six bucks, but but that's okay. Um, so you're looking at about all this together. is about 61, 62 bucks. And if you just consider half of that, you know, it's under 60 to build a planter like this. Um, now, this planter is really popular, and a lot of people love these things, and they buy them. Uh, you look around online, and they're for sale everywhere. Um, this Cedarcraft sells these things for 379 bucks. Same planter, same size. And it actually is put together out of a bunch of smaller pieces of cedar, so it's probably not quite as good. But um, And then they got to pay, well, okay, no, but they don't have to pay for shipping here. Um, you can find them on Amazon. This is Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. And it looks like the same company, 322 uh, let's look at this place here, Adams Furniture. Looks like a little bit thinner stock, a little bit less beefy material, 310. Uh, and even Home Depot and Lowe's are getting in on the action. Uh, they're selling these things for like 255 bucks a piece, but you can see it's not nearly as stout as what we have. But even the cheapest that I have found these things, uh, you can build these things for under a quarter of this price. And even if you're charging you know, 200 bucks, uh, you're still tripling your money. So that's a pretty good profit on your project. Real quick, before we start in on the build, I want to talk to you real briefly about a sale we've got going on. For those who are interested in making money with their woodworking, I'd like to point out a video that we recently had uh, that where we put together a package of plans for sale that we call our Ultimate Adirondack and Outdoor Furniture Package. This package includes all of the top selling projects that there are, and it's the perfect thing to take your summer sales to the max. It includes six different plans and four templates, and it also represents the first time we've ever had a sale on any of our furniture plans, and we're bringing back the sale here for this video, and it's 30% off this package. I'll put a link to the video where I discussed all this in the description below. I'll also put a link to these plans if you should decide to get them. And I'll also put links to each of the individual videos that came out showing in great detail how each and every one of these are built. So there's a lot to look at, and that's all in the description down below. One final but very important thing, if at any time in the past you ever bought any one of these plans but you still want the package, it's no problem. You can still get the package if you like and whatever plan or plans you may have bought, I'll substitute one for one for any other plan we have in our library. Um, doesn't matter if you've bought uh, a cheaper plan here but you want a more expensive plan, that's fine. I'll swap any plan out for any one of these that you already have. After you get this package, you just let me know and I'll send the one that you want right away. And now let's jump into today's build video. Like all build videos, I usually start by creating a set of plans and I kind of follow those and I also make those available uh, on my website for anybody who is interested in building this project. Here's my daughter Covey again and this is her significant other, Ryan. Um, I'm actually going to be showing Ryan how to do woodworking. Um, they came last Christmas and helped us do some Christmas mallets and he just fell in love with woodworking. And it's something that he's been wanting to do and wanting to learn for a long time. And so they, she has basically moved back home. They were living in Nebraska. And she's going to be working doing marketing and stuff like that for me full time. And Ryan is going to be uh, learning woodworking and working in the shop full time with me. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully with the extra help, I will be able to get a lot more projects out. And if these plans happen to be something that you're interested in, there will be a link down below in the description to get these plans. So to start with, we're going to cut the 2x4s out and create all of the legs, the front leg, the back leg, and the individual arms that will hold the planter boxes up. You notice in the, from the looks of the build that it looks like the legs are 3x3, but in fact they are made of 2x4s that are just doubled up. 
That allows us to create a half lap joint or a cross lap joint just by blocking pieces together and without having to get a dado blade out and cut them. I always chop off the rough ends on dimensional lumber. It makes it look a lot nicer and ensures that it's square. Now Ryan knows this, but a lot of brand new woodworkers might not. The piece on the right is the piece that he's keeping, so it's important to keep the saw blade on the left side of that line. You don't want to cut the line down the middle because your piece is going to end up being shorter than it should. So always make sure your blade is cutting on the side of the line that the wood goes to waste. The other side is the side that you keep. With all the 2x4s cut down, it's time to cut the triangles, which will go on the ends of the planter boxes themselves to retain the dirt. Now this, I have chosen redwood for mine because we're going to put uh, herbs in there, which are going to be food that's consumed, so I'd rather not use pressure treated. And you could use a cedar board, you could even use pickets there. Um, you could use pressure treated there if you're just going to do flowers, but if you're going to use food, I would probably recommend not using pressure treated. This is the board that I was talking about that's a 2x8. It needs to be a 2x8. The whole planter was designed so that if you use a, a piece of dimensional lumber that's a 2x8, which is actually about 7.5 inches wide, that it fits perfectly in the, uh, in the ends of this planter box. And again, this is also only really needing about half or a little bit less than half of this total 8-foot length of 2x8. So you could get two planters out of that. After that, we're going to move over to the cedar pickets. Now, this is uh, a dog-eared cedar picket. I'm going to cut the dog ears off of it. I'm basically going to split these boards in half because I want this planter to be as wide as I can be. And so they're about six foot long, roughly, maybe a little bit less. And so I'm just going to cut these, whatever it takes to get them in half. That's going to really dictate the width of my planter. And we're going to cut um, basically all six of these in half. And here's a quick look at all of the lumber that we have cut so far for this project. It's actually a really fast project. You could knock this whole project out in probably an hour or two, uh, even without a whole lot of experience. If you don't have a table saw, you can certainly do this with a circular saw. There's no problem there. You might add a half an hour to build your project. Now we're ripping these down to a specific width because we need wide ones and narrow ones because I have to put two of these together to make one wall of the planter, like a front wall or a back wall. And one of them I'm going to leave at full width and the other one I'm just going to trim down a little bit uh, to get it to end up being the right width that I'm looking for. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue all of these, all six of them at the same time, although they're glued into three sets of two because the planter front and the planter back is basically a set of two that's put together. And so we're going to go ahead and add glue to this. Uh, probably doesn't uh, make a whole lot of difference if we add glue or not, but um, you know, a little bit of water may end up leaking through if you don't. Not really a big deal because we're going to line the planters. And it looks like Ryan's got some good, uh, some good glue experience there. I think he might have been watching a few of our videos. He knows how to do it. I probably would have put more glue than that, but hey, you know, that's just me. And last one here. And oh, hey, maybe he was reading my thoughts. Perfect. Right, in case any of you were wondering, that's exactly the right amount of glue needed uh, to glue up this joint. Okay, well, I wanted to give a shout out to our Kings Fine Woodworking community on Facebook. Uh, we have a community group there. It's uh, If you're interested in joining, it's for woodworkers only. And uh, I spend a lot of time in there answering questions, talking to people, and helping people with their projects. And it's filled with woodworkers. Some of them are experts, and uh, some of them are those that need help. It's a great place to post pictures of your product. Uh, things that you build and uh, and to get questions answered if you have any and i'll put a link to that in the description down below in case you want to check it out all right well here this is all glued up i've got a couple of calls there and put some squeeze clamps on there to just kind of keep them flat and of course we like to get the glue wiped off here uh, before that sets up and then we're going to move on to the next part of the project which is assembling the legs i'm just double checking the orientation of how I want this shelf arm to be glued up. And it's got the long piece in the back, the short piece in the front. And then this is going to be a cross lap joint right here. So I'm putting that in as a spacer. And then there's going to be a piece at the end, which we're going to trim down to size. And so I'm going to go ahead and glue these up. Here again, this probably isn't necessary, but you know, a little extra glue will help this project live forever outdoors, which is kind of nice. So there's a couple of different ways that you could do the assembly. If you're working by yourself, you can use a finish nailer and put some galvanized nails in it and just tack these pieces together. That'll hold it more than strong enough for you to follow up with some countersink holes and inserting the screws. Uh, but if you have somebody who can help you out with it, then either you or them can hold it while the other person puts in the holes and puts in the screws. Both methods work great. 
Since two of these together are three inches thick, I like to use two and a half inch deck screws. These deck screws are ceramic coated and will never corrode outdoors. All right, so next I've got to put this two by four spacer in. This is where this arm piece is going to cross lap over with the leg. This piece is going to go in next. I'm going to install it and then I'm going to cut it off. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I were to just cut a really short piece first and then try to drill the holes and screw it in, it would probably split. But if it's a bigger piece, then the strength of the fibers of the wood will hold it together. And then I can cut it off at the end when I'm all done and it'll work successfully that way. So I'll pull this off, wipe off any of the excess glue in there, and then take this over to the chop saw. I'll get my blade lined up right with that edge, and then I'll go ahead and chop this piece off. And now we have the piece that I really wanted to begin with, and no splitting. All right, next we're going to move on to the full-sized leg. Oh, sorry, this is the, the smaller leg. All right, and same thing. It's basically made of components and a spacer in between there to account for the cross lap. So there's nothing different or unusual here. For this one, I went ahead and I tacked those in myself first with some finished nails. And now you see I can uh, easily drill the countersink holes and put the screws in without anybody helping me hold this still. If you don't have a finished nailer, I wouldn't rush out to buy one for this. Although they do come in handy if you have the budget for it. There's a lot of projects that you can do pre-assembly on. In fact, all of our outdoor furniture projects that we have that I talked about at the beginning of this video can be made much, much quicker if you pre-assemble them with finished nails and then follow up with screws. That makes a big difference. Probably cuts your speed down maybe by 30%. All right, so we pop that piece out so it'll half lap in the future with the other leg. Then I take a minute to just kind of sand off all the rough edges. We're not trying to achieve anything perfect. It's just a piece of outdoor furniture. So I've got some really coarse, like 80 grit sandpaper on here. Make sure those are flush, get it all smooth. I sand off the fibers that come up from the screw holes. I'm not gonna even bother plugging these. This is just a piece of uh, outdoor furniture, just a planter, and you, your eyes won't be drawn to those screw holes. But that's it, that's all the pieces. That's the arms, the legs, everything for the whole project. And we put that together in about 15 minutes. All right, now it's time to unclamp the two different panels that I made. Uh, I only showed one on video, but of course there are two because the one I showed made three um, fronts or backs, and then the other one made the other three because we have uh, three planters total, so we need six fronts or backs total. This is my wife, Rupa. She likes to uh, film all of our projects, but occasionally she comes and helps us uh, uh, assemble or disassemble things and, and do some building from time to time. And there's Ryan. Okay, so you can see I have tall ones and short ones now based on how I did it. One of them were full, one of them was full length and one was shorter. And check it out. So this is my triangle, and you see the short one matches up just right to that edge of the triangle. Whereas the tall one, the reason we needed that is because, you see it's short there, but if we put that at the bottom and we line it up on one side, and then we put this on top of that, now they'll both line up. The top one will line up and the bottom one will line up. See, the bottom one basically has to be longer by the thickness of uh, your picket. And that way they'll both end up on top and look good. So here I am going to um, tack it together first. Just makes it a lot easier. That's my finish nailer. You can get finish nailers pretty cheap, like an 18 gauge finish nailer. I think these are like maybe 99 bucks at uh, Home Depot. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I'll put a link to a couple different finish nailers that I like to use down in the link below. I've got Porter Cable and Metabo, and, and they, they all work really good. I've got half a dozen of them here at the shop. All right, now we're going to go ahead and assemble uh, the other side. We'll follow up with screws when we're all done, of course. So these uh, picket pieces, of course, have some little warps in them, but we'll push those warps out when we nail or screw this together. Luckily, they're cedar, they're thin, they're very flexible, so... There'll be no problem accomplishing that. And here too, we'll just uh, pre-drill uh, or countersink, put the countersink holes in and then we'll follow up with screws. These are engine 5 5.8 eighths, deck screws, same thing. I like these ceramic coated deck screws. And so that's nearly done, but now I'm gonna use a real small pilot bit, just a straight bit, not a countersink bit. And I'm gonna put some stainless steel finishing screws in the bottom. This is gonna hold the pickets together. This is a number six by inch and a half finishing screw. It's a stainless steel finishing screw. It has a Torx bit. It's real small, real thin, won't split the cedar. Stainless steel so it'll never corrode. A box of those 
is really handy to have for outdoor projects. I was a little bit out of focus there, but it's real simple to put them in. I just drill a little like a 1 16th inch pilot hole and follow that right up. And that's what they look like. All right, that's it. That was real easy. We assembled all three planters in just a few minutes. And now we're going to move on to the main assembly where we're going to put the legs and the arms on and then the planters ultimately. So here too, I'm going to put a little bit of glue, probably not necessary. This is a, often called a half lap joint. Technically, this would be a cross lap joint since the, the board crosses over and continues on the other side. And everything is square here because it's going to result in a 45 degree angle. And the 45 degree angle is basically what the, uh, what the planter is. The little 45 degree boxes. So after we get them to fit and you know, we know they're going to fit because we uh, put the spacer, a two by four spacer in. So I like to drill four holes and then put that together. And again, we'll use the two and a half inch deck screw here because we're going through three inches of wood. That way we don't poke through the other side. Same deck screws, of course. And there's that. That's pretty simple. It goes together easy. We didn't have to plow out any joints to make these cross lap joints. And we'll stand it up and take a look at it. And these are fairly heavy because they're pressure treated and pressure treated is usually pretty wet. And you see the three little V's that are created during this construction method. Now I'm going to assemble the boxes onto it. So I'm going to set this on my assembly table. I just want it to be the, the fronts to line up straight and be kind of square. And then I want to make sure that this isn't slanted at some funky angle, you know, straight up and down. And then when I have those both looking straight, then I'm going to go ahead and screw in the planters. I'm going to go back to the deck screws, probably the inch and five eighths deck screws are best here because you don't need a lot of depth. Um, and we'll just put two per picket. You know, there are two pickets on each side that we glued together. So, you know, four screws on each side. And then four screws on uh, the other end of this planter on each side. So there's quite a few screws in this. And I put this brace on, but I didn't even put this in the plan. You could put it if you want. Um, but I, I thought maybe it would be necessary. But we, once, uh, once we had it together, I took the brace off just to check it out. And the thing is so solid, nothing seemed to be able to break it. So I don't think that brace is necessary. If you want, you just cut a piece of wood 36 inches long and screw it in back there. But it's really not needed. I probably should have clipped that from the video. After that, I took my router and I just put a chamfer on all the edges just to kind of make it look a little bit neater. And there it is. The project is all complete. Super simple project. You can knock this out uh, uh, on a weekend uh, or even just you know a few hours on a Saturday, really. It's not that much. And these are pretty good sellers. If you were to batch these out, I would think you'd probably do 10 or 12 on a weekend, no problem. And here it is after we've moved it outside. I'm gonna put wheels on mine wheels kind of make it easy like I showed you at the the clip at the very beginning wheels make it easy to move around it's actually fairly heavy already because the the 2x4 pressure treated lumber is fairly heavy you know it's wet and then once you get the the dirt in okay well let's see I'm gonna line this with fabric this fabric allows water to go through no problem but the dirt won't be able to go through so I'm not gonna have dirt leaking out of any cracks or seams in here just clean water those are the wheels I put on I'll put a link to those I think I paid like 15 or 18 bucks for the wheels and that's pretty handy they're just like workshop workbench wheels so you move a workbench around with but that's the completed project there's my daughter Covey again like you saw at the very beginning and she's going to show you how this works you just push the levers down on these workbench casters they're not necessary there's just if you want to move your your planter around that's easy because full of dirt and water and with the weight of these it's a couple hundred pounds maybe 300 pounds even that's pretty heavy and you move it over into place and then you just lower these and it rests on the planter itself but yeah, that's optional and there it is projects complete i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching